Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about something different. Uh, just another way of joining panels. I've showed uh, in some of my welding videos and also in just my new patch panel video how you do the butt joint, which takes a lot of time to do properly. So you don't have to do that butt welding joint all the time. If you're doing restoration and you're putting a panel that you made or you bought onto a car that has no access, uh, oftentimes that's the, the uh, desired method of uh, joining a panel is butt welding that new panel either under or over the old panel. And ideally, if you put a little joggle in it, then it's flush and then you can let it, you can bond to it, whatever. It's not the best repair for outside skin, but it's quicker and uh, that's what a lot of people like to do. So, uh, that, that's for the outside skin, but say you're doing uh, floorboards, you've made up these really nice floorboards and you're putting them in. Well, there's no sense in having to butt weld floorboards either. You want to do a lap joint like this. Now, the lap joint with the step in it so it's flush. So after you get the lap joint you have a couple options of how you're actually going to join it. Now if you've got a situation where um, the car you're doing floorboards and you're way in, in board into the car where the uh, drive shaft tunnel is and you're going to do a overlap joint with a, a joggle um, getting a pair of tongs in there and spot welding it all in, in situ right in the middle of the car is almost impossible. Now they do have a spot welder, I have one, and I don't really have much experience with it, I bought it but I haven't really used it yet, is a one point spot welder where you have to put the ground underneath, someone probably has to hold it there, and then you push on the other side. Uh, it does do the job. Uh, I've heard people say positive comments about them. But a common method is to have the punched holes and they can be 3 sixteenths and or I think 7 thirty-sevenths or, or, or quarter inch si uh, size holes which you punch in and you can punch the holes in with uh, a, a simple little hand punch like this because you're only going in a little way. You only have to go in, you might have a lap. In this case here I got about a one inch lap so I'll come in about halfway, about a half inch of the throat. These have I think about an inch and a half throat depth total. They make a bigger version of this. So uh, what we're going to do here is do a side by side comparison of spot welding with a MIG welder, a plug welding with a MIG welder here with a joggle and plug welding with a TIG welder so you can see the difference and then later we'll do a joggle uh, plug weld here but it won't be a plug weld, this will be a spot weld with a, a pedestal spot welder and then you'll be able to see all the different uh, potentials that you have. So first thing we're going to do is put some joggles on this here on both sides of it. Now we want this to go down and then this will be flush like that. Now when you're doing this say on a repair of a car and you're putting a patch panel in, if you joggle this side that's going to be like that and then the water can get in there so you really want to joggle this side and then, then the water will flow away and you can seam seal it maybe on the back side if you get some access, but most likely you're not going to have access. It depends on the situation. So let's do the joggles here. We're going to do them on this. We're going to bring them down. I've got it marked with a magic marker. We'll go over to, we'll do these joggles in my tipping wheel. All right, I'm going to do the joggle with this setup. I have another setup with two wheels and it does the joggle really nicely. This will do it fine too. So I'm just going to go along this and I'm going to lift this up a little bit like that. Okay, so we'll do one more pass.
Ah, so there's our joggle right there. Let's run it through one more time, de define it a little better. I should have put a line in the back side here. But. There. That's a nice joggle there now. And we'll do the same thing on this side. There's our two joggles. Actually, right, so this one has a uh, bead roll that has a stepping die on it, so we'll, we'll run it through here. So there's my nice step right there. And we got that one done. All right, so this one we did in the tipping wheel, this one we did with the, uh, the bead roller with a joggling die. And, uh, stepping die and now what we want to do is this one's going to be welded on there and we'll take and punch a series of holes in these all three panels now this one's going to be spot welded so we don't need to punch holes here but these are going to be plug welded so we got to punch holes here so i'm just going to mark them off here that's more than enough there so i'm going to go punch these holes in my punch i've got a foot punch and uh I'll punch the holes and then we'll come back, we'll clamp this up and we'll start doing this uh, plug wells. Alright, I got a whole bunch of holes punched here and now we'll clamp this up. Get it nice and tight. Now on the car you won't be able to do this, so what you can do on a car situation, on the, well on the outside skin or maybe even on the interior, you can actually um, drill holes here and put Clecos in or you can put pop rivets in and drill them out later. Uh, that'll both work. They do make an a air tool that does both the punching of the hole and it does the stepping too. That's a portable little air tool. It's inexpensive, less than like 60 bucks, maybe $80 or so. Depending on where you buy it. I, I'm sure there's Chinese knockoffs of it. So. We'll try the TIG first. We'll do a bunch of them there. Maybe not do all of them, but you'll get the idea after you see it. And then we'll put the MIG on for the other side. Then we'll do the spot welder. I'm starting out with 50 amps here. Let's see what that does. Now the trick is to grind your tungsten back at least a quarter of an inch is what I do anyways. Quarter to 5 sixteenth of, of an inch. I use a 3 32nd tungsten. And I got a big cup on here, so it's flooding the argon on really nicely. And you want to get right in the center. I'll do a little drawing. So, say this is an exaggerated view of your hole here. We're going to hit it right there with the tungsten and get that into a molten pool. And then we're going to take our rod and just drop it in there. And if everything works out well, we'll have a very nice looking plug weld. Didn't turn gas on. All right, we just uh, tried to do the first one, and I forgot to turn the gas on. I guess uh, nobody else did that before. Happens a lot. So that's usually a fatal error on uh, aluminum welding because uh, if you run the aluminum weld without the uh, shielding gas, it just will not weld it. You have to grind it out before. But I think we'll be okay with the steel. Let's see. All right, that played hard to get. There was some impurities in there. So let's go to the next one over here. So we should have better results here. All right, that one was a lot better. Now I'll go over here. And I've done a lot of these 
plug wells with the TIG, and I much prefer them with the TIG. Probably need a little more amperage. Let's go up to 60 amps and try this with 60. Yeah, that was nice. So you can consistently pop these off. Just remember to turn the gas on. Let's do one more and then we'll do the MIG. We don't have to do them all. Mark's in a hurry to get home. It's been snowing and he's got to drive an hour. Okay. So I think you get the idea there. You've got to focus your heat right in the center add a little rod until the rod runs around and it, it is pretty much flush. You don't have to do too much grinding if you do them right. Let's see what we have here. All right, so there's your back side of the weld. You see there's a lot of drop through here, depending on how much heat you put in. Um, the more heat, the more drop through. So a nice little balance there, you can get it perfect. So now let's try the, the MIG. And we'll look at both the front side and the back side on the MIG, too. Hopefully remember to put the gas on when we start the MIG. We're trying to get that rod right in the center. We'll go directly overhead and we'll just give it a little roundy round like that. I've got it set where I normally do uh, uh, butt wells with it. Ready? Okay, let's lower the amperage a little bit and then see what happens. All right, so there is a good comparison. I lowered the amperage, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. What I find when I'm migging the plug wells like that, you can see on this one, you might not get all of it because it's very difficult to see. The, the TIG weld is a little bit easier to see, uh, but you can go in and fill that again if you wanted to. On the TIG welds, if you're too hot, sometimes it'll, it'll uh, enlarge in the hole a little bit, so you, they both have their little idiosyncrasies you got to watch for. So let's look at the less penetration on them, but that weld is fine. That weld is not going to break. These here, this little pimple on the back side is just dropped through from the excessive heat. I might be able to lower the heat and just dwell a little longer, but you really want to be in there and out of there pretty quick. So that won't hurt. And it sucked it up really nice. You can see with the clamp there, that sucked up pretty nice too. And then if you ground this, this is all going to be flush. So let's go over to the spot welder and we'll throw some spot welds in here and you'll see the example. All right, this is uh, on a little portable spot welder that Harbor Freight sells. They sell two versions, uh, 120 volt and then the 220 volt. This is the 220 volt and it comes, these are the standard tongs that it comes with. I think they're only six inch tongs or so and it has like a um, small format 220 plug on it. This is the small 220 plug. And uh, that works pretty good. We've used that a little bit. And we bought a bunch of tongs. I think we bought two or three sets of tongs. Uh, I found them available on eBay. Uh, somebody's making them up um, to fit this Harbor Freight machine. So you can enlarge in the throat of it. There's also better, uh, like a Miller makes a really nice, uh, more durable one, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure about the KVA. I think this is really low. It's about one or two meaning you have to dwell a lot longer to get a good weld. Uh, minimum you should have like five to make a quick quick spot weld. 
I think the welder we're going to be using over here, which is a pedestal spot welder, is 15 kVA. I've got two and I'll show you those. Alright, this is my Alfil spot welder. I think it has like about an 18 inch throat on it. Uh, it has uh, some of the features you want to do if you want to, if you want to buy one of these is you definitely want water cooled uh, tool, uh, tips, water cooled tips. Uh, because otherwise, without the water cooling, they, they turn red hot really quick. Uh, this one, we, I bought a water cooler. It's a Chinese source water cooler. You can use that on a TIG welder or a spot welder. And this one has a timing circuit. And also it has air assist, so it squeezes the metal together really nice. It's a premium, nice welder. I think it's a 15 kVA. It'll do probably um, 14 gauge weld together. You probably could do a little bit heavier, but it's really quick. Uh, this one is my older one. This is an Alfil 2. This is a rocker type. See, this comes down in an arc, and I have literally done over a million spot welds with this thing, and it's, it's a workhorse. I put an air cylinder on it. I haven't been using the air cylinder lately. I made a little cam timer there that actuated the air cylinder, but I had some springs on it and the springs broke. I made a little water cooler for the, for the water cooled tong, so I, then, and, but I said uh, I had an opportunity to buy this one, and this one's just a vastly superior because it doesn't have the rocker, it comes down straight. And sometimes it's quirky and locks up on me, so I gotta be careful. So. Let's put a couple spot welds in with this. This one has a foot pedal that actuates it. You get kind of spoiled when you start spot welding with a machine like this. And this is an older machine too. This is probably 35 years old or so. So if you were doing floorboards in a car or something, you could pull the whole assembly out. Uh, as long as you could plan it right, you might be able to get by with just that 18 inch throat. The larger the throat machines, the generally the more expensive they go. So there's the back side of that weld. That's a really strong weld. It does a beautiful weld. You see the little dimple in the back there. That's not coming apart and it takes minutes to do. All right, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about the plug welding and spot welding. Remember, metal is clay.